She comes to me in the gaps between speech. She comes to me when the wind blows up with the scent of sweet vegetables and their dry dirt in the fall. I can sense her on my left, on the half log under a tree, and she's only ever there when she's looking at me. Of course, I see her in other places too. She is a person, after all, with all the ups and downs and dramas of a person's life. But the part of her I treasured the most is the part that she shows to no one. I had to dig it out of the ground like a fossil, dust it off gently so as not to shatter it. It is the part of her that is afraid to speak. Maybe I'm wrong. The light bouncing off of her and into my eye at an angle not quite true, but I see the rest of her as a casing, and it's grown to be as real as her own skin, entwined within blood vessels to make it inseparable from what was there before. Alone, though, on rocks and in trees and away from her cell phone, she sheds this skeleton to become a new creature. I feel this person rather than see it. I feel the lips curling upwards with joy, la breath curling laughter into my ear. I feel it in her tiny written wishes and regrets. I feel it as something that has left me a long time ago. Did I take it for granted, giving back what she gave to me and turning to other more eye-catching colors? There is a gap between us now, a gap that I can measure with my two hands, but cannot breathe. There is once something in her, for me, something that I let go of, and now only regret when the breeze comes in on October afternoons, and I remember the time we spent, peeling away at the shells we had been building up for the rest of our lives. 